So in this video, I want to discuss how you could take your data from the ticker tape timers that you used with the constant velocity carts, and you can make a graph and get an equation for that data using a spreadsheet. We've already practiced graphing by hand. Um, I think figuring out how to use technology to do the same thing is important. And it can also save you a lot of time and give you a powerful tool uh, for future data analysis. So the major trick is going to be to create a spreadsheet. You can use any spreadsheet program you want. Microsoft Excel, Lotus 1, 2, 3. Uh, in this example, we're going to use Google Sheets because that's what my classes are using in the fall of 2017. So the instructions are going to be specific to that program, but every one of these spreadsheets has similar functions. So if your spreadsheet doesn't look quite like this, just root around and you'll find uh, the similar functions. So make a folder in your Google Drive, and in that folder go to New Google Sheets. We'll call this constant velocity ticker tape data. So you're just going to make a chart like you saw on the paper. Use your data, not mine. So that's time in dots and distance or position actually, sorry, in centimeters. So I'm just going to copy over my data. You do the same with yours. And when we get back uh, to our full spreadsheet, we'll see how to analyze it. All right, so we've got all our data, and now we're ready to graph. Easiest way to graph, highlight uh, your cell that has your legend in it. Hold down the Shift key, and then just use the arrow keys to move over and highlight the entire table. Um, once you've got that done, you got to find your spreadsheet's chart editor. In Google Sheets, it's here, which may be hidden off to the side on a Chromebook. But you open up the chart editor, and you just got to make sure it knows what kind of chart. So we want a scatter plot like we did in class. And you could see that by default, it actually did a a pretty good job. This is almost done. The only thing it's missing is our best fit line in our equation. And check it out, the Chromebook can do that for you pretty easily. So you just go to Customize, Legend, and oops, I'm sorry, you go to Series, and you go to Trend Line. And once you click Trend Line, you get some options. You can pick any of the shapes you see here. This looks linear, so we'll try that one. And if you click on Label, you can change it to Use Equation. And you've got your equation there. x equals 0.267t minus 0.508. So we'll get back to the, the meaning of that equation a little bit later. But this is all the graphing you had to do for the first lab with even more data points and it's done almost instantly. So spreadsheets are a very powerful tool for handling lots of data. Let's close out our editor. We'll drag this chart kind of out of the way. And we'll get back to it later. So um, the other thing I wanted to do with a spreadsheet is I wanted to introduce another way of looking at the same motion that maybe gives us a little different information. Here we plotted position on our y-axis, x, versus time 
um, on our x-axis. Another way of looking at the same data would be if instead of we put position here, we put velocity. So I want you to imagine, based on this graph, what a graph where if we, instead of plotting where you are at every given time, we plotted how fast you were going. What would that look like for this motion? I hope you can predict, but we're going to do it, and we'll see if it matches whatever predictions you may have. In order to make a velocity versus time graph, we need to have the velocity. And we're going to get that by adding a new column. So it'll be velocity. Instead of meters per second or miles per hour, it'll be our distance over time units. So our distance was centimeters and our time was dots. So you got the velocity in the previous slide by using the slope equation. x2 minus x1 over uh, t2 minus t1. So to do that, let's go to the row where x or t2 and x2 are. Let's highlight that cell. We want to calculate a velocity for all these different points. And if I made you do that by hand, you probably would be unhappy with me because it's very repetitive. But computers are really good at doing things that are very repetitive. And that's one of the things spreadsheets were invented for. We can tell the computer how to do one calculation, and it will make a formula to do the rest for us. So to have the spreadsheet do this, you type the equal key. And let's put in the formula for x2 minus x1. I'm going to put it in parentheses just so we don't have any order of operations problems. So I typed equal and then I did a parentheses. And I'm going to click on x2, my second position. Notice that what comes up is the, the cell name, b3. So I'm going to do x2 minus x1, which is the guy above it. And I'm going to close my parentheses because that's the top of my fraction. Now we're just going to do divided, which is a slash. And we'll do the same for t2 minus t1. And that is the slope formula as it pertains to the first two data points. So once you're done, you just hit enter. And that's your velocity at your second data point. Notice we couldn't do it at the first one because there was nothing before to subtract from it. So you don't actually have to put that into the other cells. You could just do that again and again and again in here. But the spreadsheet can do it for you. It knows this formula. It has it saved. So the way you do it is you go to a cell that has a formula and you mouse over this little blue square and you just click it and drag it and it just calculated all our velocities for us if we go down the first one was b3 minus b2 over a3 minus a2 now it's b4 minus b3 over a4 minus a3 b5 minus b4 over a5 minus a4 it advances for us so it just did all the math for us. So I want to see what that velocity time graph looks like. Let's have the spreadsheet make that for us. So same deal. I'm going to highlight the first two columns. I know that says position and time, but it's kind of a weird quirk of how Google Sheets' editor works. We'll change this from a position time graph to a position velocity graph once we make it. So we'll go back to the chart editor. And we'll change it again to a scatter plot. Um, and instead of position, as my series, I'm going to go here and change it to 
velocity, which I'm just going to click and drag. And now I'm going to do a little bit of editing. So I'll go to customize. My title's going to have to change. It's now velocity, which is in centimeters per dot. And my vertical axis is going to have to change. And that's it. So there is our velocity versus time graph. We'll close out the chart editor. Is it what you expected? The two charts are giving us the same information. This is telling us that as time passes, our position steadily increases. We have a constant slope and we're going at constant velocity. This graph shows that as time passes, our velocity staying constant. That's what this horizontal line means. We appear to have some deviation towards the end, but at the beginning we're definitely seeing that pattern. So these two graphs are just two different ways of telling us the same information. What's causing this error at the end? It has to do with how we calculated it, and we'll save that for an in-class discussion as to what's going on. So to finish up the data analysis portion for this lab, if you can input your uh, data for the fast cart and repeat this process and make two more graphs.